0.23 here. So we'd expect this observation of 20, here 31. To confirm, we can again use the identify like this. Identify, I'm going to have my, it's got to fit my graph so the x axis is girth versus y axis, which is left. All right, enter. Okay, cross appears. All right, so this expects 0.20s. There you go, fantastic. This one expects to be 31. There you go. Now at this point I don't have to say this, but just to give you in more insight into what this leverage is, I've discussed in another video, the leverage measures how far your uh, these each of these observations in the x coordinate are compared to their to the other ones to the other ones, and the idea is that if the point is close to the map to the, all the bunched up with all the other ones, it's going to have a low leverage whereas the ones which are further from the mass of them is going to be high leverage. Okay, So here are some low leverage ones. These are very small values. What are they? 15 point observation, 15 observation, 16, observation 22. Okay, it'll be interesting to see therefore a plot of my two exponential variables, girth versus height, and compare it to the plot here to get an understanding of what this leverage does. Okay, so for this I set up another window because I want to compare the two graphs. I'm going to plot one expanded variable, girth versus height, and I'm going to identify the plots points. Okay, here is enter. Alright, now here is the graph of height, uh, girth versus height. We said the point of high le of leverage measures how far you are uh, from the center of the x's. So around here is like around the center, isn't it? And that is quite far out compared to the others of the center. So this we'd expect to have a point of high leverage. Let's click to see which observation it is. Uh, close enough. 31. And this one also appears to be quite far, doesn't it, to the other ones? 20. Not surprisingly, they already came up in this plot, plot of the leverages. Look, point of high leverage, point of high leverage. Okay, and that is because looking at this plot, that's exactly what leverage measures. It measures how far you are from the main mass of the uh, x's. Since I only have two x's here, height and girth, I can actually draw this thing. It looks like a scatter plot. If we look at round here, these values should have lower, should be down here somewhere low value of leverages because look do you agree that this is more towards the center so what is that observation 16 ah it's here all right well where is 15 is that it no it's 23 but around here is what's this one 15 fantastic 15 16 because it's almost a good guessing game this isn't it 15 16 15 16 there you go because these are around the center these are further out okay so what's this one this one's got all right. So anyway, you got the idea. Now, if you got the idea, you also realize that you can determine what the points of high leverage are, even without fitting the model, because you don't need to fit a regression model to get the leverage, because it only depends on looking. Because the leverage is, I could say, technically, is only a, depends is a function of the exponential variables. In other words, all we need are the x's. We don't need a model. We just need the x's, the values of the x's, and then we can compute the leverage just for each observation. To recap what have I shown you, I've shown you that how we can uh, determine, uh, get an idea of whether there's outliers in the plots. We look at the standardized or studentized plots for the residuals. Uh, for the points of leverage we can look at the hat values and we can get a plot of the uh, hat values against one of the explanatory variables and I've linked that to the, uh, the points of leverage. I've linked that to um, the idea that what it measures is how far an observation is in the x coordinate relative to the main mass of x's. Finally, we said we can use the Cook's distance, which takes into account both the size of the uh, out, uh, possible outlier, uh, I takes account of the size of the residual, and it takes into size account of the leverage to get one overall measure of the inf inf uh, whether the point is influential or not. Now, if the Cook's distance value is greater than 1, this is standard, then we'd say it is the point is influential. And then what you might want to do with that is take it out of the 
your data set because it's atypical. However, the cook's distance by itself may not suffice because if the point is merely a high leverage point, but it's a good leverage point, in other words, it's not an outlier, you might still want to keep it because it won't violate, if that's the only thing that's wrong with them, wrong in, in uh, speech marks, wrong with your model, it's not going to affect the assumptions of your regression model. Okay, so that's the uh, that's it for um, outliers and points of leverage.